Hi, this is Steve. I wanted to give you a quick overview demonstration of Dynamics GP. We're going to take a look at navigation, some simple reports, accounts payable, items in inventory, and also sales invoices. So let's get started. This is the Dynamics GP 2010 homepage. Each user has their very own homepage. On it, they can put reminders, they can put reports, they can put links to other pieces in Dynamics to make sure that they can get their work done as easy as possible. So let's take a look at it. One of the easiest ways to navigate is to use the area pages on the lower left-hand side. On the lower left-hand side, you see all the different modules within GP. So for example, say I wanted to do a purchase order or an accounts payable invoice, I'd go to purchasing. When I select that, I get everything for that particular module. I get the transactions, I get the cards, which are the master files. I also get inquiry screens, utility setup, and reports all in one area. Dynamics GP comes with a number of reporting tools. One of my favorites is SmartList. SmartList is really a collection of table groups that are put together to make it easy to get information out of Dynamics GP. Let's take a look at it. Here you can see the different modules within GP. Let's take a look at sales. In sales, I've got customers. I also have sales transactions. So let's take a look at the sales transactions here. These are individual detailed lines of invoices, orders, back orders, and returns that are in my system. What I can do with this is this is a nice report just as it is, but I can easily modify it if I want to. For example, say I wanted to add the customer name to this report. It's easy to do. I click on Columns, select Add, and you can see I've got dozens of columns to choose from. If I want to add the customer name, I can just scroll down here, add the customer name to my report. It's now on the list. I'm going to promote it to the top, and now I've got a new report. I've added additional column. I can add more if I want to. I can take columns out if I want to. And I can analyze it just like this as a fine report, or I can also export it to Excel just by clicking on the icon. So here's the add data in Excel. I can further analyze it in Excel here. I can add some additional graphs to it, do some sorting on it. But let me show you what I did with another one that I did earlier. What I did is I saved my smart list and it's for sales lines here. I took these sales lines, I saved it as a favorite, I created a macro in Excel to give me some graphs. Let's take a look at the results. Here's my lines here from a particular product group I have. I'm going to go to Excel and go to the graph. It's going to dump that to Excel. It automatically does a pivot table for me and creates a graph. We have found that SmartList is the, probably the easiest tool to use within Dynamics GP to get information out quickly when you want it. Let's take a look at the payables functionality within Dynamics GP. First of all, let's take a look at a vendor master file that's contained under the cards area here. I'll click on vendor. It op opens up the vendor maintenance screen. I can look up my particular vendor. Let's select this one right here. And here I've got all the information about this particular vendor. I can have as many addresses as I want to. I have some additional information that's available here for a particular vendor. I can fill that in. I also have an accounts area here where I have default accounts that are going to be used when this vendor is used within the system. You can see those accounts here. I've got a def default account for purchases. I can have multiple accounts for purchases if I want to. If I click on this ellipse here, it shows me that I have a four additional default accounts that might be used during data entry. So let's enter a transaction. I'm going to enter a vendor invoice. It brings up the payables transaction entry screen here. Let me just enter some information about this invoice. I could put it in a batch if I wanted to, or I can post it online real time, which is what I'm going to do. I'll look up my vendor here. Here's the vendor. I'll select that. Let me put in the vendor's invoice number right here, and then some information about that particular invoice. This invoice is set to go automatically to payables when I post it. We can look at the distributions by clicking on the distributions button here. And here you can see that the system has provided default GL accounts. If I wanted to change the accounts here, I could easily do that. For example, say I wanted to change this debit, I could do a look up here and I see these default accounts that I specified earlier. But if I wanted to look at all the accounts, I could look at all the accounts as well. 
If I wanted to add additional distributions, I could easily do that here. I'm going to post this invoice into payables. If I wanted to print the check right now, I could hit print right here. But I'm going to post this into payables. And when I post that, it's going to create a number of posting reports that are maintained within the system. If I wanted to, I could just enter another invoice, but I'm not going to. I'm going to X out of this. So let's print some checks. In order to do that, I'm going to create a batch. I'm going to put invoices in that batch that will be turned into checks. Go to Edit Check Batch here. I'm going to enter a batch ID. I'm going to add the batch. It's going to ask me which checkbook I want to write the checks from. I'll select that. Save that batch. When I tab off that, it's going to show me all the open invoices in my system. Let's select the vendor over here on the left-hand side that we've been working with. It's going to show me all the open invoices for that particular vendor. I don't want to pay all of them now, so I'm going to unselect the ones I don't want to pay. Then when I'm ready to go, I can save this. I can come back to it. I can modify this batch if I want to. But once I have the batch ready to print checks, all I need to do is bring that batch up, hit Print Checks, I'll select the check format that I want. I'll use this one here and then print the checks. Let's print them to the screen. And here's the check format right here. This would print out on check stock. And once I do that, I have the ability to post those checks here. I can also reprint them if I needed to or void them. And that's a simple check printing process. I showed you a vendor, we entered an invoice for that vendor, and then included that invoice in a payables check batch and printed the checks. Let's take a look at inventory. I'll go over to the inventory area page. Let's take a look at an item. It brings up the item maintenance screen. Let me type in an item number. Here's my items. All my items in inventory are going to have a particular type and evaluation method. And generally, I will be tracking quantities for the items. These items can be used in purchasing and also in sales. And as transactions are processed in sales invoices, purchase order receipts, the inventory quantities are going to go up and down based on those transactions. From this window, I can store a lot of information about my items. I have an Options tab down here, which gives me additional information about this particular item. I have six user-defined categories here that I can use to further define these items. I also have additional information on this page here where I can store photographs. I can store links to vendors, links to other sites right on this particular page. So let's enter a sales invoice using that item. I'll go up to the Sales Area page here. Go to Sales Transaction Entry. It will bring up this screen. The type of document I want is an invoice. Let me select that. I'm going to scroll down to the customer ID, look up my customer. Here's my customer here. When I select the customer, it's going to fill in the sales invoice with all the default information from that customer. I can click on this blue arrow here and get additional information about the customer. Also along the bottom, I have additional information as well. I can click on payments here. I get nice statistics about this particular customer. I've got a nice little aging over here on the left hand side which gives me additional information. So this is the header information for this particular invoice. A customer can have as many addresses as you want. You can put that invoice or sales order into a batch. I'm going to leave this out of a batch so I can post it online real time. So this is my sales invoice header. Now, now I want to add a line item. So I'll just type in that line item right here. I can easily look it up if I wanted to, but I know what the item number is. So I'm just going to type it in. When I do that, it's going to go out to the pricing mechanism within inventory and give me a price for that particular item. Here you can see it's $8. I can scroll back and see if this is the price list for that particular item. It's matching the item with the customer and giving me that price. If I wanted to, I could add additional items on this here, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to take a look at one item here. Let me drill back into the detail for this particular item. When I do that, you see all the default information that's defaulted in from the system. If I wanted to, I could change these dates to better reflect how this invoice is going to flow through my business. In sales invoices, I have the ability to have several user-defined fields. 
I also have user defined holds. If I want to put credit holds on this or other process holds, I can do that in this screen here. Almost every transaction in GP is going to have a little link like this for distributions. This is going to show my default distributions that are generated from my system based on the customer, based on the item, and based on setups that I've done at the system level. If I wanted to change any of those, I could do that here. There's also a simple commissioning function within GP. I can use that, but it's very simple. So here's my completed invoice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this online in real time. And when I do that, it's going to do a number of things. It's going to post this invoice to inventory. It's going to reduce the quantity of inventory for that particular item. It's also going to create accounts receivable entry in accounts receivable for this particular customer. It's going to create all the general journal entries having to do with the transaction and then post them into my system. So this is a quick look at how to enter a customer invoice in Dynamics GP. This is a quick demonstration of Dynamics GP. We looked at some simple navigation, some really nice, easy, simple reporting. Also looked at how to add a vendor, how to include that vendor in the invoice and also in the check run. We looked quickly at items and how to include those items in a sales invoice.